Today, we're going to explore the world of the largest steel producers in America. From demolition to processing, we'll dive into every stage that turns iron into sturdy, ready-to-use steel. Just imagine from scrapped cars to molten steel melted at blazing temperatures, we'll explore every detail of this process. It's not only awe-inspiring, but also full of thrilling challenges. So get ready to dive into the unimaginable world of steelmaking like never before. Welcome to Steel Dynamics, an American company that is one of the largest steel producers in the world. Just think about it. There are 11.2 million tons of steel, with the company's profits reaching $18.4 billion. As we can see, this factory area is the starting point of all steel. Here, all the scrap iron is collected, ranging from small pieces like one centimeter iron to large pieces like cars. All this scrap iron is found in various ways, from junk car sellers to scrap iron scavengers. From this scrap iron area, all the iron will first be put into a crusher machine. As the name suggests, its job is to make the large-sized scrap iron smaller. After that, the crushed iron will be inspected by several workers to separate unwanted materials like plastic and other non-iron materials. This process is done to simplify the next steps. Once sorted, the iron will be transported into the factory. Inside, the iron is again separated into different containers. This is done so that the steel can be of the highest quality possible. After sorting, each container will enter a melting furnace that turns the solid-shaped iron into liquid. Just looking at it, it's clear that this glowing iron is super hot. A slight splash and you're practically getting a tutorial on withstanding torture in hell. That's why workers in this section must wear special suits that protect the entire body from splashes of iron. Oh yes, to make this heating optimal and reach fantastic temperatures up to 1700 degrees, Celsius, the melting process is assisted by using three electric electrodes with a power reaching 15 million watts. So, in addition to being dangerous due to the heat, this process also involves high voltage electricity. Workers really need to stay focused because a tiny mistake could be fatal. After it has perfectly melted, the iron will be poured into the next machine, which has the task of purifying, or in other words, cleaning out contents other than steel. In this machine, there are two processes that occur, desulfurization and deoxidation, due to the mixing of chemicals. This will make the steel even more solid and free from unwanted material mixtures. Essentially, the goal is to achieve 100% pure steel, Now clean, for the first time, the produced steel is cast. This is done by pouring the molten steel into a casting machine, which will make steel slabs 6 centimeters thick. This process is quite complicated, because every inch of the steel produced must be sprayed with water to strengthen it and rapidly reduce its temperature. If even one sprayer fails, it could be disastrous, because the steel could easily break. Oh yes! But even after being sprayed with water, the temperature of the steel remains extremely hot, only dropping to 400 degrees Celsius from 1600 degrees Celsius, so it's still too dangerous to touch. The reason for the still super hot temperature is because the 6 centimeter thick steel is still very thick. That's why the produced steel will go through a press machine to be flattened into thinner sheets. To accomplish its mission, the press machine used has a pressing capability of up to 1.5 tons. So practically anything that enters it gets flattened. The hot steel that enters this machine can be processed into very thin sheets, even down to just one millimeter thick. Once flattened, the steel sheets are rolled up. In one large roll, it can weigh up to 22 tons. The creation of those giant rolls doesn't mean the process is complete. The steel produced is not yet in its best condition because it's considered dirty and still mixed with factory materials. That's why one large roll is reopened and then cleaned through galvanization, 
or the application of an anti-rust coating. After this cleaning process, the steel produced will look shinier and also be ready for the market. This is where the company executives are ready to profit. After becoming shiny steel rolls and being widely sold, there are many things that can be done. One of them is making railroad tracks as previously discussed. However, the creation of railroad tracks is nothing compared to the processing of steel into steel pipes, which are often used for water flow, gas, electrical cable protection, and others. The demand for these is skyrocketing worldwide due to underground technology. The process of making steel pipes starts with the melting of pure steel, which is then formed into long pipes. Since pipe sizes vary, these hot pipes will be processed according to demand. The resizing process is quite easy because it's all done using machines. These machines do several things, heat the steel pipes, then flatten them, cool the steel pipes, and then wash them. After that, the process is repeated until the desired steel pipe size is achieved. Once finished, the processed steel pipes will be stored and ready for the market. There are actually many more exciting steel processing topics to discuss, but I could talk for two days and two nights if I were to cover them all. So let's stop here for now and see you in the next video.